Hi, so today we are going to talk about plate tectonics. And I know that's one of, one of those long, probably kind of boring sounding words, which is actually not boring at all, I promise. So plate tectonics talks about the movement of the gigantic plates of the surface of the earth. So tectonics comes from the word tectonicus, which means pertaining to building, um, which is so appropriate because plate tectonics is the movement of the plates that builds the really awesome and cool landforms that we see at the surface of the earth, like um, mountain ranges and, and valleys and, and oceanic trenches. All those things are created by plate tectonics. I'm telling you, it's very exciting. So the first thing that you probably need to know when we're talking about plate tectonics is that the surface of the earth, known as the lithosphere, which is where we live, is divided into plates, a series of plates. Um, so you can see here we've got the North American plate and the Pacific plate and the South American plate, and then we've got some smaller plates like the Nazca plate and the Scotia plate. And all of these gigantic plates, um, they, some, a lot of them include land, um, so you can see here, I'm just going to change colors, you can see that the North American plate has, has the land of North America here, Canada and the U.S. and then um, that sort of thing, and then more land over here, but it also has the oceans. So the, the oceans, the ocean floor also makes up um, part of the plates, so they are, they're massive, enormous um, um, sections of the lithosphere and what happens is the the plates are actually in constant motion so um, you can see that these arrows here that you can see in the photograph actually indicate the direction that these giant plates are moving um, so why are they moving these, these gigantic pieces of rock why are they moving um, so that can be explained so if you think about the Earth, there's my, my lovely perfect circle. Um, if you think about the Earth, and you take, let's say you take a cross section of the Earth here, so pretend that that's an actual um, perfect cross section of the Earth. Um, inside the, the very middle of the Earth, you've got your core here, your inner and your outer core. Um, they're not pink and purple, but... Anyway, so you've got your inner and your outer core, and then you've kind of got this other part, which is called the mantle, and the mantle is divided into, so we've got the part that we kind of live on, which is one of the smaller parts of the Earth, and that's called the lithosphere. So the lithosphere is um, the part of the Earth that is solid, so it's on top and it's, it's solid, um, even though it includes the oceans, because we're talking about the ocean floor, um, it's solid. So it holds all of our mountains and all of the people and the cars and the buildings and the trees and the, the ocean, as I said. Um, so it's, it's um, about zero to a hundred kilometers, let's say, thick. Um, and that is, that is our, our crust part. Um, and then the lithosphere sits directly on another relatively small cross-section of the earth here called the asthenosphere. So the asthenosphere, asthenosphere, um, is not solid. So it's not exactly liquid, but it's not solid. So you've got the crust and it's sort of floating on this, this asthenosphere, this not solid part of the earth. So um, as you know, when things float, you know, if you're picturing your boat floating on a lake, um, if it's not anchored to anything, it's just gonna, gonna move. If the, the lake is very calm, like the asthenosphere is calm, it's not really wavy. If it was really calm, it would float really slowly, um, but it would still move. So the lithosphere is constantly moving. And the, the, the plates move, so I will go back to this picture. Um, well, the plates move in, in different directions. So they either move away from each other or they move towards each other 
or they just move past each other. So like here, they just move past each other. Um, and those three forms of movement create different um, effects on the Earth's surface. So the first form of movement um, is called convergent. And with convergent movement, um, the plates sort of crash into one another. And you can't really see that one. I'm going to pick a different color here. Um, the plates, there we go, crash into each other. Um, but when they crash into each other, um, the, there's always kind of a smaller plate and a bigger plate. And the bigger plate, oops, the bigger plate goes on top and the smaller plate goes on the bottom. So this can happen when if this one is an oceanic plate and this is a land plate, the oceanic plate will usually go underneath and in the ocean that's where the, the trenches are created um, and with the, the land plate going on top that's how mountains are created. So like the Rocky Mountains in North America or the Himalayas, these giant mountain ranges are created when the plates converge or, or crash into one, each, one another. Convergent um, movement is also how earthquakes and tsunamis happen because when the plates crash into one another, um, the the effects, the, the boom, um, sort of ripples outwards and and that movement is felt, you know, when, when you can imagine they're, they're crashing. So that movement, the vibration is felt um, sometimes for miles and miles and miles away from the actual site where they crash into one another. So convergent movement of the plates um, is what creates mountains, it creates trenches, it also creates destructive forces like earthquakes and tsunamis. Another um, form of, of movement is divergent. Um, and divergent means to break away. Um, so that is when two of the plates are actually separating from one another. Um, and so when they separate, that allows for some of the hot um, liquid from the asthenosphere to, to break free and, and move up into the lithosphere. And when it moves up into the lithosphere, it cools. Um, and that cooled lava, I'm going to do a different color even though it wouldn't normally be, that cooled lava um, ends up being um, a volcano. Um, and when it solidifies, they become volcanic islands. So divergent movement creates volcanic eruptions, um, which are destructive forces, but they also create volcanic islands like Hawaii. So when they separate and the lava comes up and cools, that then becomes solid landmass. So that's pretty cool too. We wouldn't have Hawaii if the land masses were not moving away from one another. And the final movement of the plates um, is not as, as known as transform. And although that doesn't actually um, transform too much um, in terms of, of land forms and land masses, um, it does transform, it changes um, the direction of the movements of the plates. So that's when tra a transform movement is when the plates are just sort of moving past each other. So they sort of scrape together and they, they move past one another. Um, so a few other things um, that, that, that are useful to know is that this isn't something that we feel. So the, the continents are, are drifting at a rate of about, a hun the maximum rate would be about 100 millimeters a year. So this is not like massive movement. It's just the thing that is, is transformative and, and exciting about plate tectonics is that um, that 100, 100 millimeters a year is, is, is on such a, a, a large scale um, that, that we get, you know, mountain ranges and we get, um, we, we get the oceanic trenches. It's, it's just, it's very exciting and I would encourage you to, to learn more about this amazing 
event.